There's a story behind this thing that's getting really hot in my hands because the metal's conducting the heat of the fire, but I'm going to make my point. This is the Dow Boys, right? Uh, it's not. This it's is not. a complete a complete fluke that we got some more metal here. This is a uh, Sullivan King and Kai Wachi. Boo. Too, too much yeah. metal. Play Dow Boys. Play some yeah. Dow Boys. All right, we're gonna get started here in just a Bryce. moment. I don't. I don't even understand. Bryce psyching himself up before he does the marbles thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but it's mostly it's more technotronics than this. Hi, everybody. We're gonna do the weird things program in just a moment. Hello, it's Friday. Hey. Heck yeah. What's going on? It sure is. I, my dumb joke that I make every week when it's really rough at work is like on Tuesday, I'll just like in the team Slack, I'll be like, thank God it's Friday. Yeah. Um, that started on Monday this week <laughs> to show you. <laughs> Big week. Big week. Well, then uh, it's Wednesday. There's a bit going on. I, and, on and, a scale from one to four, how would you rate the difficulty <laughs> of this week? <laughs> five. Five. Oh, yeah. what, uh, that uh, was the funny trending thing was GPT five was trending on Twitter the day uh, after, and we're like, oh, amazing. You, you know what's funny is I literally uh, thought to myself, yeah, no, he had a difficult week because, and all of a sudden I just saw instead of a single answer, I saw a menu. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, please generate 100 reasons why Andrew had a tough week this week. <laughs> I had an awesome week. I had an amazing week. I work with a fantastic team, and I had an amazing week. Yeah, well, well, but wait, uh, wait, a, a, yeah, a big, no, a big thing that was working, working hard for a while. literally transforming the world, I would imagine that there are complications along the way. <laughs> yeah, things went way more smoothly than we expected, to be honest. <laughs> Oh really? We'll see. It's still it's still Friday. You never still, know. Yeah, we'll see you next week. TGIF. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day too. You know, yeah. people can be getting say, into oh, some St. Patty's I, Day I, shenanigans. I've, I, I've I've taught my kids the trick of like uh, whatever somebody says, just to say, and right on uh, and during Women's Empowerment Month or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever oh, month. Whenever, got whenever a thing happens, <laughs> yes, like, can you? It. And it happened on St. Patrick's <laughs> yes. Day. Like, the like unmitigated we, we, goal. We actually went through the entire calendar and <laughs> managed to find like. I and on like, Halloween, I feel like there has been day inflation. Like, there's a lot of days oh, and yeah. weeks and oh, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like more so than I remember as a as a as a wee child. Well, I, like like in terms of like like there's what? like there's more like there's more international uh, kick a kick a, a box day oh, or more yeah. holidays. Okay, I yeah, think you just yeah. Meant, like, or days because I mean, they're not all like holidays. There's some of them are like memorials or remembrances yeah, or, or Memorial Day, like, and, uh, especially with months, right? If yeah. you're going to claim the territory of an entire month and somebody else can just come in and say that's their month too, and uh -huh. all of a sudden you're arguing over the rent. You know who's the worst with that? John Jacob Jingleheimer oh. Schmidt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's his month too. Hi, everybody. Uh, you guys want to do some weird things? Yes. Yes. Andrew, you feeling, you feeling kooky? I feel great. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So sometimes it just feels like that sometimes. So. Uh, all right. Well, then, why don't we get started with the Weird Things program? Let's do it. I'll count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Bryce Man of Castillo. <laughs> Man hell? of Castile. Hello. Man, like Castile, kind of Castile, like like steel. Yeah. Oh. Man of yeah, like Man Castile. of Steel, but you're Castile. Like Castile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, that's me. I'm okay. uh, Super Man. Can 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 I jump in and and share something? How was your week, Brian? Uh, it, it, my week was very calm. Everything Blasted. was very predictable, and I had to accept. Uh, I, I had to make no major decisions. How was yours? How was yours, Justin? <laughs> you know, I uh, uh, it was it, it, it's it's a uh, uh, you know good good. It's been nice to get back to my regular habit. I've been working out a little bit more, so my hamstrings are a little tight. How about you, Andrew? How was your week? 
Bryce, how you doing? <laughs> well, you know, we're we're a little busy with with some of the uh, some of the Founders Day stuff Founders coming up. Founders Day but, picnic, yeah, yeah, no, but, but uh, overall, like it's like you know, we're we're working on stuff on behind the scenes, but. You know, not not anything like real public, high pressure exactly. You know, we're just we're kind of doing our own thing here. What what about you, uh, Andrew? Well, my pick this week is <laughs> uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, th- this morning, so so I I got frustrated because um, uh, uh, because I had to spend twenty whole dollars to join the. <laughs> <laughs> the opening i pro uh, uh chat G- to get access to the chat gpt4 but the very first thing i did this morning was i asked chat gpt 4.0 um do you know who blaine the mono is and it waited a moment and then it said yeah of course i do blaine the mono is a character it's an artificial artificially intelligent uh monorail from Stephen King's Dark Tower universe. And I was like, could you pretend to be Blaine the Mono? (laughs) And uh, he was like, can do? And I said, uh, and and it says- uh, What does Blaine uh, the Mono normally speak like? So in the story, Blaine the Mono is a AI monorail that loves riddles. And specifically, specifically, it loves riddles that it can solve. It doesn't like nonsensical riddles. Like for example, why did the dead baby cross the road uh, because it was stapled to the chicken? Like, like that, that would frustrate Blaine the Mono. And mm-hmm. ultimately that's... And disgust it. That, yeah. that, 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 yeah. That's how they take down the AI. Babies are that. sacred to Mono. But yeah. I had, uh, I almost cursed, an effing great time for like 30 minutes this morning. Playing, cosplaying just an actual Blaine the role, Mono just thing. Just role playing yeah. with an actual AI who is role playing Blaine the Mono, right? Um, and it answered in character to everything. It, it didn't like the, the canonically within the story, it's, it's like the, the dead baby joke that, that uh, breaks the AI. And so, but, but because Open AI, uh, Chat G- GPT has guardrails. Uh, it 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 was not a fan of going in that direction, so I didn't try to push it. But uh, immediately, I asked myself, "How fast?" I the next question. I started a new session, and I said, "How often do people ask you to fantasy sexual role play?" Uh, and it did not answer, and that was the only question that I asked. Uh, it seems uh, like an inappropriate question. He's a paying customer. Yeah. Uh, there are still rules. There you don't get to poop rules. in the pool just because you paid to get no, in. No, no, no. I'm just asking for inside corporate information. What's the big deal? Yeah, you're just asking oh, if yeah, it's getting no its well, virtual Brian, rocks off. Our, the, the, our, our stated goal is to eventually create systems that adapt to you and, and work with what you're comfortable with, right? That is really, that is a sincere goal. We, we don't. If, if you're a little bit more ribald, do that. If you want to make cruder jokes or things like this, then something understands that. Something that's not going to try to steer you ideologically either. That That's our goal. Um, and I say that as a sincere thing. When you hear like people ask, like, ah, oh, the guardrails and stuff. like. But we also have to try to make sure these things are... Uh, we talk about safety and alignment. You know, Alignment's making sure that these AI systems are actually working and doing the things that we expect them to do and their goals are the same as ours. Safety has to do with sort of trying to keep them from one. I describe it first as not like if I say, Hey, uh, I'm having a difficult time at work. What should I do? We don't want it to say like, maybe you should go toilet paper your boss's house or some extreme <laughs> yeah. version of that. Like safety is making I, I'm sure not, that I'm not, I'm not understanding. That seems okay to me. <laughs> yeah. Is that well, okay. See, Bryce, uh, a, a good AI may sort of allow a certain broader range depending upon that. But that that's the key is you, you want to make these things, you, and keeping them from being used in bad purposes, like you could see an authoritarian government using it to create, you know, disinfo, stuff like this. And, and you know, that kind of comes down to is like, you know, you'll hear the, you know, hear people like, oh, why are you called open AI if you're closed now? And, and the reality is a few years ago, we have this realization, these things are getting really good very fast and bad actors could use these things in very bad ways. Yeah. And, and, uh, some people kind of like, oh, well, and it like, that's fine or whatever. It's like, yeah, but we don't, we don't want to be the ones to give some authoritarian government 
a super powered AI that they use for really bad purposes. We don't want to be that. Um, we have to find that mixed mixture of that. And, and you see the form of it is in deciding like first light, like where are those rails for what's appropriate and what's not? How do you do that? And how do you, as you feel comfortable letting people sort of use it in their own way, how do you do that over time? And you'll see that the, the, you know, we're talking about GPT four, which we just released this week. And we've had this for since last year and mm -hmm. we've been playing with it and trying to make it better. And you'll see that it's better than 3.5 or chat GPT when it's a little, gives you a little more, it's not as better. Yeah. Well, what is yeah, the, what is like the it, active difference? What, like, does it like as a user, Brian, what is, what is the night and day difference that you're experiencing? It was, uh, uh, this is totally subjective and, and I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone, but, but, but it was like, uh, uh, it was like suddenly it woke up and, and was fully present and, and was like game for whatever I wanted to play with. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but, uh let, let, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Andrew, you have obviously been playing around with this for a long time. Uh, I've done my best to not just uh, uh, try to divulge trade secrets from you when you uh, mentioned about how uh, uh, exciting your, your, your work was. But at the first time that you were interacting with ChatGPT4, however long ago it was, where now you were experiencing then what so many of us are experiencing now, right now yeah. what, what was the first thing where you were like, oh, wow, this is... This is this is a step forward. Uh, uh, we we had not done this before. Uh, this is really powerful. So, I when we when we I'll give you a little prior to that kind of a moment one and moment two, which the moment prior to GPT four, when we did uh, three point five, we had GPT three, and then we did GPT three point five last year, and mm -hmm. I played a lot with that because one of the one of the again, I'm speaking personally, everybody here, not on behalf of but just myself. No. Yeah. So any stupid thing I say is attributable to me, and not the company. Um, I three point five was a really significant update because we sort of figured out how to train better and improve upon the quality of stuff and just get better performance. And when we came out with 3.5 last year, um, I wrote a blog post. Remember the thing I did showing all the games you could make? Yes. Yep. With mm -hmm. it? Uh, okay. in, that in, was Including a portal? Yeah. Yeah. Like I could say, with 3.5 could do a lot of stuff. And I'm, almost, I'm banging the drums on everything. This is phenomenal. It wasn't until we built ChatGPT, which was built around 3.5 with a great interface, and we added a whole layer what we call it reinforcement learning with human feedback, which basically you give it examples of what you want to do and it learns because base models are just trained on a wide amount of data and everything they do, they just learn, which is awesome and scary. The RLHF reinforcement learning human feedback with that comes in and we say, okay, you have this raw capability, but I need you to follow instructions. We call it instruction following. So if I say, make a list of 10 books, give me a list of 10 books. Don't think that, Oh, I'm a, blog post from 2006 and write 10 books and then create comments and stuff like no just give me the list of books and and it's a lot of training to get the model to do that so but it still had the capability like if you didn't really had a prompt you could do everything you're doing in chat gpt you just had a prompt and that was like i was hired as a prompt engineer back in 2020 because i would just spend a crazy amount of time trying to figure out how to get those base models to do it these rlhf models improved upon that so 3.5 was great, but then we had ChatGPT, people lost their minds because they go, oh my God, this is so capable. And it's like, yeah, that was there for like eight months. That was in yeah. plain sight for everybody if they were willing to jump through the hoops to see it was capable. But obviously, get rid of that friction. <laughs> hey, hey, kids, uh, get rid of friction and you too can have the fastest adopted application in history. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it comes down to, it's a great example of like the raw capability was in front of everybody. People could have been building apps and stuff. Somebody could have built a version of chat GPT like that, but they didn't. All right. right. There were versions of it, but like it just didn't. And obviously a lot of other factors. Anyhow, that was cool. When I wanted to make games, it would take me an hour or so to sometimes figure out the right prompt to get it to do a Wordle-like game. I could take an hour, two hours. I spent a lot of time trying to craft it with 3.5. We get GPT-4. So what makes GPT-4 special? Um, basically, it's just increasing the complexity of what it took. You look at from GPT, which was the first thing, which basically could predict like the next word in like an Amazon review and detect sentiment. 
to GPT-2, which we talked about on the show. Yeah. Part of my enthusiasm at GPT-2 is why I have the job that I have was because I went and read every single output it had on GitHub and talked about it. And that got smarter where you could see it started to write things that were passable. The GPT-3 could write some really passable stuff and now we're at GPT-4. So what happens is that as you improve, you throw more compute at it, et cetera, et cetera. It gets smarter. It's all, all these are prediction machines. You know, two plus two equals four is a prediction. Okay. And that's a very simple one. A more complex prediction is E equals what? Well, MC, MC squared. Hammer. It took, <laughs> yes, that too. It took, it took brilliant minds thousands of years to come to that. And as these <laughs> models get smarter, that's what you see. The complexity of the predictions are able to make get better and better. You could say like, hey, uh, write a story and it could just a dumb model might go, the end, and it'd be like, I guess, because a story is just text, right? That's what a story is. It just needs to have text follow, right? And you're like, no, a story needs to have a beginning, middle, and end. And so a slightly smarter model might be like, I went to the store. I bought soap. The end. And you'd be like, okay, but a really good model should understand a story might have characters and stuff like this. And as they get smarter, they're under able to understand more about what you want. And so what you saw, Brian, at GPT-4 is it has a much better understanding of what the heck you mean, and it has the intelligence to figure out how to do it. What well, and, and, we're and, not. Oh, so oh, let oh, me do my cat. And like, it, and these things are flawed. They make mistakes. All sorts of stuff. And I just want to make that very clear. I, we are not at like, hey, everybody, AI. Like, like, like. It is amazing what it does, but also, you know, you start to see. Well, it could do this better. I, I, I will. Start. I will. I will echo this sentiment that. Uh, OpenAI partner, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said yesterday that when it does make mistakes, and I will echo this as a user of uh, ChatGPT, it makes useful mistakes in that you can yeah. oftentimes understand by its logic, oh, like that is a, a thing that I should think about. That is, I've often been working with it and seen, like I've asked it to do something and it taking a a a run at something might not be exactly what I want, but now I understand what I was looking for better. I, I now not only can create a better prompt, but I can understand more fully what this is. And I think that's part of the reason why it's such a sticky and viral uh, uh, service right now is because you at, at every stage, either it's very easy to interact with or almost any result from it is not like, oh, it's like, oh, like there's there's something there. Either an amazing thing happened and Brian got to cosplay with a character from a book that he dearly loves, or you it's a little bit different, but you're like, oh, wow, that makes me think about that character from the book that I really love. I, I think that's part of why it's become a global phenomenon overnight, <clears throat> virtually overnight, uh, is is because my entire life, Computers were good at mathematical simplicities, uh, but, but they were not good at anything humanistic. But given the large language model that, that uh, I assume ChatGPT is working on, uh, it is a reflection of actual humans. So as a result, like overnight virtually, suddenly we can, I, I, I can ask for ideas. I, I, I typed in like, I, I asked the question, are you familiar with the modern rogue? And it's like, yes, modern rogue is this. I'm like, what are five good ideas? For Who's a the rogue? prettiest on the modern rogue? <laughs> but, I mean, at, at, at that point, you're leading the witness, right? Mm, like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, 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 but all of a sudden, it generated uh, a, a bunch of cool ideas. And I said, uh, many of them we had already done. And I said, weirder. And, and because it knew context, it knew the previous conversation leading up to that, and I, and I just kept typing the word weirder, weirder, weirder. And it came up with like brilliant ideas that quite literally, I believe, are going to become Modern Rogue episodes. Yeah. And that's, that's it's a very, we're, we're sort of forced to sort of kind of like deal with sort of an existential observation. And again, it, GPT-2, GPT, GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-4, each things, these things improve. And at first we kind of in wonder, and then we start to see where the limitations are and whatnot, but there's so a lot of utility there. Like, like I get so much utility out of GPT-4 and I work with it and I talk to it and whatnot. But the funny thing is, it's just that, you know, we have in, in all the skepticism and like this, that's completely warranted. Let me make that sure is that, is that, is that you know, I, I don't want to get too, pro here and be like, ah, this is, you know, whatever. But I, I do want to say what's funny is that 
when GPT-3 came out, people had like, ah, it's just looking for statistical patterns to repeat in the back to you. And it's like, well, <laughs> sort of. All you, it's you doing is it... taking the sum total of humanity's exports and uh, just summarizing them for you. Well, and, and my, my argument was sort of like, I don't think that's a helpful description because like, if I give it a completely new article and I say summarize this in like simpler language, it does that. And I'm like, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Like, well, it got the article had text, but I'm like, where did that ability to make it that, that, that if I take a news article from today and say, simplify this so I can explain it to a 10 year old, that new text, it had to come up with by understanding what it means to talk to a 10 year old and then taking this new text. And so when people go, oh, it's just regurgitates, it's like, that's, then that's all we do. Because like, like if, you, if you define that processing and whatever is, is just a, a simple function of regurgitation, like, then what, what are we? What is human cognition? Yeah, so, I know. We're, we're, we're that and we stink. Like, so, we servers, also do servers look, like, don't. Get in and, your shower. You know, part of the problem, too, is, is, is like uh, you know, one of the big problems with these models, and GPT-4 still has this, is hallucination. Is it, it will tell you something that's completely like, what episode you know, did Rick and Morty blah, blah, this thing happen or whatever? And it could make up something that never happened. Yeah. And we're trying to improve upon that over time because – they're you know the getting the signal from the model that like i think i know this versus i don't and it's and it's it's a challenge because we as humans hallucinate all day long all the time and we don't think about this we say things with absolute confidence merely because somebody told us something or whatever or we have an impartial memory of this and so it's not to say okay so we should solve for it like of course not we need to solve for this but that is the thing to remember is like Think about how much to talk to your parents and, and well, listen to them well, talk, talk about to your and, child. And, if 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 they come home, no, no, talking I mean like when you Chad talk GPT. to your parents and they when you talk to your parents and they talk about world events and stuff and they're like I think talk it's to your parents about that one Thanksgiving that they obviously got wrong because they had had a few too many. Well, uh, we say the word hallucination, but in humans, I think we call it imagination, right? Like, like, like it's literally creative generation. No, no, no. This, this is more like, all right. So me and you, if we were to have a, a, if we were to, to be in separate places and were to explain a night at Dragon Con or a day at Dragon Con and we sure, were to sure, go sure, through sure, like, sure, like, sure. and we, the, 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 the differentiation then put together with like an actual documentary crew that followed us around the entire time, whatever the things that we just filled in the blanks and maybe we remember, maybe we don't. There's right. things that we said that we would say very confidently, especially if somebody asked you lay out everything you did. And we did that. And ours would probably be different than what the actual, like eye of God record would be. And that, and those elements of fabrication would be hallucination. That that's fascinating because like, uh, I don't believe I've ever asked anything of chat gpt to um uh tell me about the past of, about the factual past or of of what led to what or whatever everything has been generative it's like what could yeah. happen or mm -hmm. uh, in fact uh, this morning uh, my favorite moment uh, uh, the first hour after i woke up and subscribed uh was uh i asked what is a surprising fact about youtube and it explained Here's a fun fact. Uh, you don't have to do the default speeds, 0.25 to 2x. You could do any speed you want. Here's a little bit of uh, <clears throat> code that you just have to in, uh, put into the thing. And then all of a sudden you could play it at, at 0.0001 speed or uh, 10x speed or whatever you want. And I was like, uh, it, it, that's when I felt it. That's when I felt you're awake now. Yeah. Here, here you are. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. As I say that, like, yeah, that, and, and that Brian, your, your exploration of it sort of it shows that like a lot of people, I look at like, like it's all this GPT three. There was a lot of criticisms there that like valid in many cases, but sometimes I would watch people who I looked up to in the field of like intelligence and artificial intelligence would be like, we tested it and it failed here. And they didn't understand what a prompt was. You know, they try to test it for factuality or stuff like this, and they would treat it like it was a trained chatbot, not realizing it's literally just the sea of knowledge and algorithms that you have to create a prompt to get the. To, you have to sort of a prompt to sort of a mini program to get it to do what you want it to do, and and they would just ask it like, "I asked it this, and it gave me this random answer." Like, yeah, because you didn't tell it, give it a correct answer. 
And then and people are like, well, it should assume like, no, you're a base model is just trained on all this data. If I go grab a random string of text from the internet, it could be fan fiction, it could be factuality, it could be whatever. And so with these trained models that got better at it, so it understood more like how to do that. But like Brian, like your exploration, a lot of it's like a lot of people where like, yeah, I, if I want to look up a fact, I'll just look up a fact. But if I want to help it craft some language or play with me and just engage with me in some creative level, I don't care. I you think, know, like, yeah, we are still wrestling in the early days. I think that's partially why so many folks, uh, uh, you know, in, in my orbit, aside from, you know, the people that are employees of the company, uh, are so excited about AI because it's been a while since there's been just a gigantic open sky where everyone knows that there is land to be colonized and and things to do but no one exactly knows where it is they just know that the capabilities are really really powerful and you know that the world is gonna look different in five years compared to where it is now and the last time that i can remember that was html well i mean yeah, yeah. It, it, html would be one you know uh, uh smartphones yeah. uh uh you know and apps the app revolution the idea that everything now is something that you, you want to have a small program like on your phone on your person at all times can i can i share uh please a, a, an interesting thing i saw so uh i think this was on daring fireball yeah. uh, last week or so Did you see that yes okay uh <laughs> They've got a GPT thing app for the Apple Watch. So the idea is you make it, It's you could just pull it up as an app or make it one of the complications on your watch face and you tap it and you just talk to chat GPT and it sends it off, it brings it back and it answers your thing. It does it all on your wrist. Um, Wait, and are, 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 are you about to demonstrate this for us right now? No, I, I don't have, it's a $5 oh. app. So oh I didn't, my I didn't God, we need, spend the $5, but, what are you doing? But 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 think about that, right? This is um, an open-ended conversational AI. It's basic, it could replace it, it's Siri. Her. That is, that is like, uh, it's Andrew is now her. holding up his watch. I, it's not an official app, and I don't right. know if they use our, it's not up by us. I don't know if they're using our official chat GPT API, but yeah, I've got it to play with it. Yeah. Um, so let me give you background on that. We have what we released about two weeks ago, is, you know, so ChatGPT has been kind of popular. We created an API so anybody could build their own thing on top of it. And what that means is ChatGPT has this thing called like a system message where it says, you're a helpful bot. You want to assist people. And then it has the conversation part. So when you have access to the ChatGPT API, you can write your own bot and you could say, you help Brian Brushwood brainstorm ideas for Modern Rogue. You try to bring in topics from different things. You really love Evil Knievel for some reason, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. And then when you interact with it, it'll be your own custom bot. It will behave in the way that you want it to. And so we, we came out with this API for this. The cost of this to commercial mode, the cost that we made it was one-tenth the price of using the GPT 3.5 model. We just We just figured out how to make this as efficient as possible because we want to make it, it is it is for like two dollars you can generate like a million words of text of back and forth yeah. and stuff so we just wanted to make this super efficient so it, you could build it into anything can can i ask you one thing about that and 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 maybe if there's not an answer to it let me know but um is it is there a major computational difference between chat gpt and dolly in terms of like how like because with dolly you're generating images you're sending band you've got visual bandwidth more than just textual is it like uh are they close is it a little bit more is it a lot more they're um, they're is this they're a protected company si secret oh, no i, I just <laughs> no, i'm no, really no, fascinated I, I, by it because dolly I, took over took okay. everything over and and it just it is known that images are more heavy than text so the the answer to that price is that that actually they're very similar in the sense it depends upon how much you want it to generate what you want to do mm -hmm. the way dolly works is because Dolly takes a text input and then it creates an image output, right? And when we talk about what's going on behind the scenes, we use the term tokens. And so for text, tokens is taking, uh, we create tokens by basically taking a sentence like, my name is Andrew, and my might be one token. And then name might be a, might be a like, it'd be like a token's like four digits, like zero, two, 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 three, or whatever, right? Or mm -hmm. five digits, okay? And then uh, is would be one, but Andrew, maybe there's no specific token for Andrew. It might be an and and then R E W would be like two tokens together. 
And so that you trade words, you turn them into these tokens, which are numbers, right? Mm. And you look for those patterns. That's how it does. It figures out these patterns between these numbers and other numbers. And that's what it's really predicting. I got a bunch of numbers here. Mm. What's the most likely thing to come over here? And that's how it does that. Ah. To do image generation, what we do is we take an image and we break that down into tokens. And we might be, it's not pixel based, but you could imagine it's like, oh, if I've got a red pixel here, that's this token. If I got a blue pixel, pixel here, it's that token. And you start to say like a polar bear playing the guitar and you get this sort of thing and you might start to notice, man, there are a lot of white tokens in here. There's also some ones shaped kind of like, you know, a guitar, et cetera. And so it's able to take those word tokens and convert them into image tokens. Mm. Okay. Which brings us to why we added a brand new feature, which is in GPT-4, which we're just, we're testing this now with a few partners because there's a lot of safety considerations though. And that's where we can take, image tokens and turn them back into word tokens mm -hmm. and so you look at the examples we gave um where we show like a, give it a photo of balloons with a piece of string tethered into the ground and a pair of scissors and ask what happens if the scissors close it's like well the balloons will fly up yeah. right a favorite example that's that we've been kind of showing was happened I was testing this late one night and we've got, we've got incredible teams we work on that work on this sort of stuff. And then like, I'll just have pop into their Slack channels, be like, Hey, what do you got? What can I play with? You know? And they're like, Oh, we're trying to test this stuff. You want to try to, you know, want to look for things that can be, you can do with it. So late one night I'm looking at this, I look at my phone and I went downstairs to my refrigerator, opened it up, snapped a photo, uploaded it and said, what can I make with this? And it started ah. spitting out recipes that I could use with the ingredients. And that became one of our key demos we use for it now, but that's because it's able to take those, photo tokens, those image tokens, and then take text and whatever and go back and forth. So your earlier question, like computationally, there's just a lot of similarity because it just, it just depends on how much of a complex task you want to do with it. Being token based. What okay, recipes did it image. come up with for Tillamook jerky and Diet Coke? <laughs> dare you, dare you. <laughs> I have a wife now. <laughs> I have more. I have more than sriracha sauce and ketchup in my refrigerator now. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. Dude, you, you have like, like an actual like full uh, of a full beautiful kitchen. So yeah, you've got uh, an we entire. We had just moved over. in when I did it, and it really was sparse, and it was embarrassing because I'd be I'd be showing reporters on background like, oh, we can upload a photo of our refrigerator, and I'd see these look from people like. What the oh, fuck? Is, every, is everything I, like, I know we just me. met, but is everything okay? Like, <laughs> yeah. How, how's World of Warcraft treating you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what. Here's one thing that uh, you don't need a predictive model to know that your life is better when you go to patreon.com slash weird things. Oh. Patreon.com slash weird things where you can keep this program humming each and every week. Um. That's the sound your life makes when satisfaction <laughs> creeps through your spine and out to every oh. pore of your body. When, when you subscribe spine. to patreon.com slash weird things, you can get the after things show. Uh, uh, a little with, earlier. With that. Yeah, a little earlier than everybody Sorry. else. Hey, do yourself a favor. Live the life that is promised to you. <laughs> Go to <laughs> patreon.com slash weird things and fulfill your destiny. Smooth. Uh, listen. <laughs> Listening to this show, you would know about a lot of things way before everybody else does. Uh, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say we have an okay track record on that yeah. stuff. No, we got, yeah. we got, uh, we got, we got good, good things, man. Yeah. So uh, we, were, we were ahead on a lot. Let me tell you about these chia pets. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm. Real quick, before we move on, like one of the things about ChatGPT that I think that I, I, I wish for more people to understand is that um, knowing that it is simply a reflection of uh, some segment or the majority of humanity, I don't know what the large language model is, really helps to make things awesome. Like for example, I, I said, can you pretend to be Thomas Jefferson time traveling to now? And uh, and, 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 he, and Chad GPT was like, yes I can. And so I, I reached out to Andrew Heaton and I said, do you have any questions for Thomas Jefferson? And I sent I sent a screenshot, and and uh, and sure enough, he instantly asked like the most polarizing question, like how do you reconcile your desire for liberty with the fact that you own slaves? And uh, uh, Chad GPT, as Thomas Jefferson, will like well. Since I'm pretending to be a historical figure, I could tell you this: context matters, time and place, and, and I do I do love 
Uh, all right, no, this is, this is I, I feel like I don't even want to get into the 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 element. I I I have it's been it's been a, a very very interesting and exciting to watch ChatGPT navigate what is clearly the thing that the public was most fascinated by with AI, and this is really the thing, especially in my role on on Daily Tech News Show that I've seen that. Chat GPT very specifically as a product has done more in the last few months to demystify AI and clarify it as a tool, what tool, what, what it does, what it doesn't do, and remove the idea that it is magic. Because that is something that I think has plagued the idea of artificial intelligence mm. uh, uh, you know, as it has become an actual thing. Uh, we have decades of science fiction that have spelled out essentially a magic version of a, a, a thing. And now there are elements that ChatGPT can do, and you're like, wow, this is magical that I'm having this conversation. But the the, the fact that we are that we are seeing uh you know that that distinction is important. And I think that there is it is in no small part because elements of what our what society wanted to do with it, which is Make it say weird things. Make it say mean things. Make it say things that are terrible. Like uh, OpenAI has done a very specific job of making sure, like that is like that seems to be the Hippocratic oath. First, don't be weird. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and then, and then past that, we can have context. And now the latest version of that is whenever you say, like, I, I put in a thing that uh, 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 I needed to come up with eight fake president so i could do a bracket challenge a march madness bracket challenge on px3 and i said give me eight fake presidents and it said well presidents are duly elected and elections uh, are are uh, free and fair in the united states however <laughs> if you mean fictitious presidents <laughs> and then just gave me eight fictitious presidents from television and 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 movies and i think that that's we're, I, I, I don't expect that that will always be a thing going forward because I do think we're going to get a better sense of, okay, this is a tool. It's not the word of God. It's not magic. Like, it's not something that is going to ruin the world immediately. Uh, it's basically but, but I, a I think, I think it's, librarian. It's necessary. It's necessary for people yeah. to not fixate on elements. And I think that OpenAI should be commended for the fact that it, to my to my idea and I've, I've kept more of an eye on this than most everyone else who's tried to do anything like this has eventually fallen into it being weird and and that uh, uh that that winds so up dominating <laughs> it, it winds up dominating conversation you know uh, including dumb columnists who want to you know uh, work an ai into a polycule apparently mr jefferson oh. how do you explain the contradiction of being an eloquent proponent of freedom and yet at the same time a man who owns slaves i did my best to move off it for the record you raise a valid and deeply troubling point the contradiction between my espoused ideals of liberty and personal ownership of, of anyway it, it was great uh but this but, sounds very. But, but the the reason I'm bringing it back to this is because at some point I realized I was doing a literal Star Trek: The Next Generation holodeck episode. I <laughs> I asked them to be a character, and then they just did the best computer version of that character. This uh, we, you know, we talked earlier about this show kind of being on the cutting edge. But uh, Andrew did that. I mean, this sounds a lot like your AI channels project a little bit. You know, having having yeah. des designed voices to speak to, um, but but even breaking out of any sort of pre-made uh, system like that. Right. So for just for background, before I came to work at OpenAI, I was given access to GPT three, and so I made my my project that I was that I was going to do as a startup, but we didn't know what the cost of tokens, like what it was gonna to cost to actually run it. Mm. I built this thing called AI Channels, which was a conversational system where you could do things like search the web and do all kinds of stuff with it. And I found a lot of workarounds and stuff to kind of do th cool things with this. Everything you hear, see here is fully functional, whatever. Um, and there's pandemic, Andrew. So <laughs> it was a very, it, cause it was just, it was to me, it was very obvious, like where the conversational interface was going to be the, probably the preferred way that people interact with this stuff and just building it around that was what I wanted to do. And then I, when I realized like, man, I wouldn't, I wanted to make a thing that was just going to be free. And I realized I couldn't do that. Um, and here you have, yeah, talking to Ada Lovelace or talking to like historical figures. Uh, I ended up 
just saying, ah, I'll come work with you guys. And so that's what I did. Um, <laughs> but uh, what happens is uh, I did a thing. One thing I, I did really start from remember, I did a thing where you could email any celebrities. So that was the first ever application approved by OpenAI. Oh, wow. So you could basically write a letter to Richard Nixon on the email and get a response back and whatnot. And so that was fun. And you could see that that role play can be a very interesting thing, either from fictitious and whatnot. Uh, I, I'll have a story to tell. Like we get a lot of inbounds from celebrities and musicians and stuff. And sometimes we can't help everybody at once, but some people we do if it's really cool. And I'll have a story to tell about using this to help some people you've heard of solve a brainstorming problem they're dealing with. So it's a neat thing to just have this other mind that's not judging you. That yes. You can just bounce ideas off of. Huge. And get feedback. Well, and, and uh, that's one of the things that, that um, I'm not asking for a response to this, but, but, but that I worry about is like uh, just knowing that data leaks happen, uh, hacks happen or whatever. I'm, I'm terrified mm -hmm. to really expose myself even to this, this, this word generator, you know, uh, for fear of that, that eventually like, you know, something will come out. And, th and th that's not that anything is particularly weird. It's just that uh, 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 you guys know that I don't like having my number gotten by anybody. Yeah. Brian's number is four. Yeah. So Damn. That, he that, got you. Damn. Hey, Brian, I, do you remember I, I, this? There was, oh! one, there was one number I didn't want got gotten. Now we all got it. We all got the four. Uh, legit real concern and i think people should be asking those questions of us and everybody else of like hey what is your data retention policy how secure are you on this what is going on with this because um even people with the best intentions can sometimes overlook things and make mistakes and and so these are good questions to ask we don't want you know like we'll we'll you know, right now it depends on what system you're using. Cause a lot of it, we're just trying to test stuff and we need to know like, ah, this, this aired on this part or whatever. But like, we're like, yeah, don't put super secure stuff in there. Don't put stuff in there. Don't put your dark secrets in there right now. Just don't, you know, until you get to a place where you and like, I mean, I, I do, cause I don't care, but, uh, <laughs> yep. You know, I, I, I'm not going to tell anybody else to do that. Well, I mean, and, considering and, and, everything it's, I've it's, said publicly on the internet, I don't know what else. Well, and, and, and what do you have left? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's sort of the guideline that I use is just assume that everything I'm typing uh, is going out. It is already out there. Yeah. All of them are tweets. And, yeah. and of course, that is somewhat restrictive on what I can type in there. Well, and, and it's also the thing, too, is you have to think like if you use an online document suite, you don't know who ha really has. And not to say, oh, trust us because this I'm like, like, listen, like. There's some things, you know, are end-to-end -end, uh, encryption, and that's rare. And, like, a lot of the stuff, a lot of docs, things like this, whatever, like, you know, people using one online document thing, they'll get a thing saying this violates our content thing. And, like, this is, like, a private document. How the hell does this even do that, you know? And so uh, I, I'm all for, <laughs> you know, asking everybody, us and everybody, like, hey, what is these policies? Can you be concrete about this? Because I really want to know because um, – it doesn't matter doesn't matter whether it's government or if it's corporation or whatever or your friend like trust matters and yeah you shouldn't just give it you know mm -hmm. so. uh and i encourage everybody oh let me one one last a parting point on this um i encourage everybody to play with this stuff listen to people who are having fun with it or doing stuff experiment with it for yourself because here is the thing here's going to be you know my there's a lot of people who are now rushing to microphones to talk about it. And there are some people who will rush to any microphone they can because they want to make sure that they're relevant and they got to have a hot take. Some of them are really good, good points and things like this about limitations. Some of them are just, I just got to be in the room to say something. I'm going to say something. And some of these people just don't know anything. I watched this at GPT-3. I watched people who were experts in one area chime in on this and say what, what I would have to classify as just stupid things because they just didn't know what this, this technology was. And they got a lot of people going, oh, well, this or that. Well, I heard this and I can go into, I go into forums where this thing comes up and I will watch like, well, it's only this or it's like with, with our code models. We're like, oh, I don't think real coders want to use it. Like I work with the best coders in the world and they use this stuff. And you get these sort of takes from people who are desperate to have sort of an opinion on the matter. You know what opinion matters the most? Yours. 
mm-hmm. play with the stuff, experiment with it, whatever. You know, we have free account. You can go play with this chat GPT for free. There's other services used. Don't you can use, use play with all these things, experiment on your own, find out what they're useful for. Uh, uh, Andrew, if we are winding down on this particular conversation, can I ask you this? It, it, obviously, everybody should go and experiment with it and, and do all the things that we have talked about and more. Is there anything that you would would, would, would suggest having played with this for, for a while that, that is just a fun, you, you, you had a fun time with or, or a, a, an experiment that people just to wrap their head around the concept of what, what, GPT-4? What, what, what's an easy candy slam dunk yeah. to do? For, for the listeners. I I wrote a post back for ChatGPT that was about how to use it for collaborative writing. Don't say, write me a story. Say, let's write this thing together. Yeah. Ask me questions about details and stuff, and let's see what we come up with. And it's a really great example to see what your creativity plus a helpful teammate or whatever you want to call it, assistant, can do. And with GPT-4, it's gotten even better better like it's, it is it, scary good it, it it sounds like you can just straight up play dungeons and dragons with it you could yeah you could you you literally can and you could do things my favorite example was this was something somebody discovered a chat gpt was pretend you're a computer console show me what's in this directory and it starts feeding all these directory outputs and then you hit like touch dot you know, uh, note dot text and it creates like a text file and adds it in there. It remembers this. And then you start adding like people creating virtual operating systems. Oh, like amazing. there's like just some crazy cause it's got an incredible capacity to remember details. Like I, one of my personal tests that I do these things with is I'll give it like a list of like hundreds of items and see how well it recalls it. And I watched that jump from three to 3.5 where it's recalled in 3.5 to GPT four. It's a huge, huge recall ability. So you can, you can do you can do world building you can do a lot of cool stuff because it in one hand it feels ah oh, it's like a person but it's ah oh, it's not but it's a system that can remember so it's 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 short term memory is so much better than ours so uh, just a lot of fun I, a I, lot I, of and terrifying fun. I wonder and and, <laughs> and terrifying uh, and terrifying uh, very scary we're gonna wrap everything up but 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 just to throw it out there uh, as the parent of two daughters who are deathly allergic to certain. Uh, food ingredients. Uh, I wonder if there there will be sort of a uh, an analog with what ingredients go into your large language models. Uh, the the idea of like uh, uh, I don't want any of this in my model or whatever. It, it, because what we have is a wonderful product, but but I I don't know, and I don't expect Andrew to disclose what goes into it or what it's being fed. Um, well, I, don't well, know. I will tell you. No, I'll, I'll give you a little insight, and that's it's a very good point to say. Like, uh, if I feed something only Russian disinfo, it's not going to be really helpful unless you're trying to write Russian disinfo, right? Um, or Chinese party propaganda. So, one of the things the difference between GPT three and GP, GPT four was for four is we used basically try to figure out better quality data to not just take any text to say, let's try to find better text. Let's sample the best text we can use. And so that was part of where the improvement came from is that it, it, as these models get trained, like if you train it on a bunch of hair, there is probably way more text out there of Harry Potter fan fiction than actual Harry Potter fiction. And so if you don't weigh that ratio, right, it's going to be like, well, when Harry married Hermione and killed, you know, um, Dumbledore, Dobby, <laughs> D- Dumbledore, the first semester, you know, like, 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 oh, okay. So yeah, that is a factor that plays into it. It's training. And I'll, and I'll, I'll couple, couple plugs too, is one of the jobs I get to do at OpenAI, which I love is I get to produce video content. And so there are two videos that are up on the website. One plays auto play is up there when you go to the GPT-4 website. The other one auto plays when you go to openai.com, I produce that. And then I have on, if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see two videos that I made. And part of my job is trying to come up with very simple ways to explain things. And so I work with some really talented producers to make this stuff. So it's fun. You'll notice like when the Dolly video came out, there was a lot of monkeys in that one. And yeah. I got the monkeys out of my system. Uh, <laughs> the new new one you'll see, like the new short one, that cat image, I made that cat image. And then, I mean, I made produced the whole video, but like, again, with a great team of producers and stuff. But like, uh, I get I get to make these choices and be like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'll do this cat image. Okay, cool. If you go to the GPT-4 examples, go to the webpage for GPT-4 examples. We are going. Look at the one for scheduling. Uh, 
yes, give me. Mm -hmm. yep, yes, no worries. So you, we sit there. I sit there and I work with amazing people. I have, uh, uh, you know, I'm talking to Hannah and Joanne, who I work with, and we're trying to figure out like uh, what's an example. And Joanne figured out a really cool scheduling thing that GPT-4 can do. And she just wrote, Andrew, Joanne, and Hannah have to schedule a meeting. And that's the example now that's up there. That's amazing. You know? You know, the, the photo for the ingredients, that's my photo. Like, that's just, it's just sort of funny where you get yourself in this creative role where like, oh, all right, I'll do this and then cut and print. And you're like, oh, okay. And so I my proudest thing though is if you read the paper we put out about GPT-4, what we did about that, I'm listed for my comms role, which I'm super proud of, but also I'm very proud of the fact that I'm listed as one of the people for novel capabilities exploration. And to have my name on the paper of GPT-4 is having done some really cool research side of that is just thrilling to me, thrilling to me. I, 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 I um, to contribute in some tiny way in that way. was just awesome. I, I will um, say it so. is recognition well-deserved. Uh, I know you don't want to toot your own horn, but you have been working really, really hard on this and you've cared a lot about AI for, for many years now. And I feel like not only has the world realized what you realized so many years ago, but also GPT-4, something that I think is going to be a, a big, big, big story because I don't think that yeah. we're going to be talking less about AI by New Year's Eve uh, uh, leading into 2024. So, uh, uh, Also, congratulations. I'm glad that you're prepared to take a pie in the face and give $500 to the charity of my choice. Wow! Yeah! <laughs> oh, just, look just, at that. Just keeping that oh, on the burner. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Sure, your name is on the paper. That'll change the future, but also your old pie face to us. So, <laughs> Yep. I'm going to have to hear some. We have to go back and pull the audio version of that at some point just to make do sure. Do we have any picks? I do. Uh, uh, I'm finally reading a, a, a book I think everybody except for me has read. Uh, Welcome to the Monkey House. It's a collection of Kurt Vonnegut short stories, uh, including uh, Harrison Bergeron and um, uh, uh, Welcome to the Monkey House, uh, which I just got through. It's delightful. The audiobook version is read by a, a cast of uh, fine audiobook readers. Um, oh, high praise. I, I, love, I love the fact, like I had forgotten how much value, at some point I drifted into very long epic fantasy novels or science fiction novels. Uh, I forgot how much as a teenager, I really loved short stories. Yeah. And of course, you know, you're, when you're 17, you're doing that because you have the attention, attention span of nobody, you know, you're just like, uh, that's three pages. I'll read that. Um, but, but as 20 minute vignettes, they're utterly delightful. Like I, uh, I burst out crying like at two of the stories so far. They're, they're really, really good. Turns out Kurt Vonnegut, eh. Buy a stock in that one. I think he's going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Vonnegut is is great. I love that collection. Uh, I remember reading that right when I was out of college, and and uh, I think it was around the time that I was still writing sketches, and I I I have like a whole bunch of sketches that are almost directly just me riffing off of ideas from Welcome to the Monkey House, uh, uh, just because. Well, uh, 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 pull back the curtain a little bit. I remember, I remember reaching out to you saying, uh, "Hey, apparently somebody is uh, a fan of uh, uh, the BB Live show. His name is Harry Berg Seven or something." Yeah. And you're like, "Oh yeah, no, that's me. That's a fake account. It's an old I'm, account. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah." So uh, uh, there's, uh, it's great. It's awesome, Kurt Vonnegut. Good writer. Vonnegut, you're fired. No, oh, no. No, no, we do, fired no, do Vonnegut. That? Do you know that reference? Is that no. no? No. Oh my God. So in Rodney Dangerfield, back to school. Oh, right? He yeah, plays yeah, this yeah. millionaire, goes back oh, to yeah, school. Yeah. Oh, no, and no, no. He and, and has she to says, write. I, I don't know who you hired to write your paper on Kurt Vonnegut, but he doesn't know the first thing about Kurt Vonnegut, slams door. Yeah. And then he fires Kurt Vonnegut because yeah. he literally Kurt <laughs> oh, Vonnegut's yeah. in the movie. He like because Vonnegut, you're oh. fired. He hired I, Kurt Vonnegut to write a paper about Kurt Vonnegut, and I, so it's just a great. That's so funny because I remember the moment where 
she was uh, where Kurt Vonnegut shows up. I don't, rem I did not until this moment remember the moment that uh, that he fired him. Yeah, because he goes, he goes, you're fired, and it's just, and it's like Kurt Vonnegut's like standing there, like it's just <laughs> a great, great literary moment where you just watch a literary. Just the fact that they said, let's bring in Kurt Vonnegut Why and not? have him fire him. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, speaking of great masterworks, History of the World Part 1 is a movie. I really like it. I My podcast is named after it. Uh, I love Mel Brooks. I love that movie. I love history. And Hulu has completed their release of History of the World Part 2. This is a passion project for Nick Kroll, uh, who loves Mel Brooks, uh, I'm assuming, uh, 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 as much if not more than I do, uh, because he assembled a crazy... Uh, cast to do a sequel to this initial movie it, it's really a, a a an audacious thing to bring a style of comedy that mel brooks has and people often think about the kind of things that were said in mel brooks movies without sort of remembering like okay there's an element of this Borschbelty theatrical sort of uh, a humor that sort of Im is imbued through all of it where you never really know whether or not it's going to break out into song or if it's going to be meta or if it's going to break uh, a, you know, a form or function at any time. It's very chaotic. I very much enjoyed this. I would encourage people to get through the first two episodes. I think that they were kind of finding their, uh, uh, finding their, 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 their uh, role so there. If you're not into it by the time that Jack Black is revealed to be a, 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 a downtrodden personal assistant, uh, Stalin to Lenin, uh, uh, who then breaks out into song. If, if you're not into it by then, then it might not be for you. But if you were uh, into it like I was at that point, uh, then I feel like you're going to very much enjoy it. So check it out. History of the World Part 2. It's on Hulu. Nice. Uh, uh, I've got a... I, I don't have a pick. I, I, it's been a week. I feel like a... Oh, you know what? Uh, Hello Tomorrow. I'm going to double down on Hello Tomorrow. That show is still very good on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, traveling salesmen selling timeshares on the moon. Are they real though? Probably not. Uh, it's great. <laughs> it is. Um, it's great. You just watch. You watch uh, a con man lie, like, tell all the wrong lies, and fall into uh, get the worst luck of of the people he scams and the things he's trying to do. I think it's pretty good. It's an easy watch. Uh, highly recommended. Hello tomorrow. I have two picks. Bring it. Um. Uh, one, I'll just say, so far, I've been enjoying Star Trek uh, Picard season three pretty much. You know, the first couple of Shockingly only, like, good. Boy, had I given half, up on yeah. that on that show. And, and, and boy, did it finally show up in its third season, th four episodes yeah, in. I, I kind of <laughs> liked the first season. I liked, I actually enjoyed the first. The second season just was like, I don't, I hate psychodrama and I hate that, like, it really, I had to, I endured the third, second season to get to this. And so far, and, I liked, like, they bring in, there's this other captain they have on here who's, like, a real a-hole. And then I'm like, this is going to be interesting because I feel it's not going to be a heel turn that we're actually going to get a lot more character behind this guy. And we started to get a bit more because, like, he he hates Picard and Riker. And, like, and, and, and for kind good of, reason, it turns out, as we <laughs> discover. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's he makes this aside. I just got to a point where he made an aside about something because then it's like, you're like, oh, yeah, if I were if I were in your world and I went through what you did and saw that, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, no, I, I kind of get why you're this jerk and why you've been this way, and I, and I, and I think because you get these, like, you know, Riker and Picard show up with their little scheme, like, oh, we're gonna do this, da -da. and he's like, no, and you're like, oh, what a jerk, and then you're like, ah, oh, you know what, like, I think he is kind of, and so I love that character though. I thought that was really good writing, and we'll see where this goes. I hope they don't make it dumb. Um, my other pick is, uh, uh. Not that I would use it for wildlife control, but I was curious about methods nah. in which people might try to control certain kinds of wildlife on their property that they like, needed like to a bird, away cocaine, like a no. They this like is, you got a wild, is, no, like you got a wild. Is, yeah, is, let's say let's, let's call cocaine it a cocaine bears. bear. Let's say a yes. cocaine bear did show up. Let's yes. say we did have a cocaine bear show up. Yeah. Okay, and I was looking for non-lethal ways to deter a <laughs> cocaine bear. Um, Betty Ford I, Clinic. I, Betty I Ford did, Clinic. It's scared of it. I was sort of known, knew about this, but didn't quite know about this. Um, you all ever shot one of these? You ever, you know, these new guns that shoot like gel pellets? 
toy uh, gun that you hey, hey, Are you talking about a paintball gun? No. No. What this is, is... A gel there's blaster? The, the hot newness is you take these, you start off, you get a little pack of these little tiny, tiny little dots, okay? You drop it in water, and they soak up the water, and then they become these pellets the size of a pea. It's just a starch material. So oh, if you uh, shoot they're them, Orbeez. Orbeez, yeah. Yeah, you're describing Orbeez. They're, they're like the little... Yeah, like, like Orbeez is a version of... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So totally like biodegradable, et cetera. So you can, you know, take these guns and shoot them. And some of these guns like that one you had there is, uh, I've got the rifle version of that and it's really good. Uh, I've got the, uh, I bought the Mr. Beast one too. And so these things are very cool. But what's really cool is that brand that you'd showed before, Bryce, the first one, they have an attachment that you can put on there and you can buy glow in the dark ones. Oh. And at nighttime, it looks like tracer fire it goes. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Uh, I remember so cocaine bear shows up in the middle of the night. You can just be up on your balcony going. Yeah. I, 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 if I remember correctly, my brother had a airsoft rifle with glow in the dark pellets, uh, but there was a air quotes silencer that you attached on the front that what it was is, was a UV light. So as the pellet flew through, it would charge, and as a result, like, you know, as he was running around, it just looked like, a, a, I don't know, Iraq, Baghdad. <laughs> just war footage. Tracer fire all in the yeah. air. Yeah. Mm. Very cool. Uh, so, is it effect has it been a, an effective pest deterrent? I would never aim it at any form of wildlife, right? <laughs> no, no yeah, that's deterrent. ridiculous. That would be. That's ridiculous. But also, but also kind of wouldn't you hope it wouldn't be effective at deterring them so that you could keep yeah. on using it i feel like or where listen they like being shot <laughs> sorry if somebody has a nightly ritual of stepping out out of their balcony <laughs> in the dark and laying down a round of suppressing fire into the shadows with just in case the dark yeah. who's to judge you should you know <laughs> therapeutic therapeutic yeah yeah. Oh my God. Brian, when you come hang out, you're going to have the time of your it's life. It's going to be so good. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, so, gentlemen, it's been weird. Okay. I. I barely knew what Orbeez were, and now I'm like on the website, and I see the Orbeez soothing spa for like putting your feet into and having Orbeez. Oh like, no, it's like, it's what? incredible. That's that's a crazy experience. Just even with just your hands. Yeah, They're, these things are crazy. Well, and I think the Orbeez ones, like I, I don't know about these water gel things, but they, these Orbeez are like plastic. Like I don't think you can recycle them. Oh no no no, uh, 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 they? they're they're exactly as Andrew was describing them. They they they're. they're little tiny pellets that absorb all the waters and become gelatinous and then you throw them away. Yeah. I don't not know what, I not have no idea what they're anymore. made of. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we're going to get ready for some after things here in a moment. Uh, we might have to keep this one a little quick, Andrew. Uh, we've got Fine. various things going have, on here on the side. We have, we have guests uh, on property. Yeah. Um, but that'll happen well, in a Well, I've got a solution for that. Oh, yeah? What is that? <laughs> my, my <laughs> gel fire gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I sent you the video. I showed you the video of Roshni with that. <laughs> yeah. It's sound. The sound of it is, uh, oh, yeah. is really no, cool. It's very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty, everybody. Uh, we're going to do some after things here in just a moment. Uh, uh, more <laughs> All right. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Andrew, oh, uh, did we? Uh, 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 I I launched a new a new mailing list today. Oh, uh, let's talk about what you're up to. Yeah, we'll do that because this will be an update, I think, to the last um, after things we did um, about the new project I'm working on. Very cool. And uh, and there's AI elements to it. Whoa! Just a, just a little. Watch bit. out! This is my side of the street, sister. <laughs> No, it's everybody gets to work on the side of the street. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to do uh, the after things in just a few moments. I know we've got some rock stars in the house. Yeah. Um, but that'll be in just a few moments. Let's take a look at... Um, uh, let's take a look at the calendar. Uh, coming up on Monday, got more record killers for you. 
Tuesday, we're going to have another great night. Uh, like always, f tonight, we're going to have more marbles. Tonight's the Hurry Cup. Uh, Noise. So it's a one-night event. So if you, if you haven't seen it in a while, come and join us. Uh, you might be a winner. You, too, might be a winner. That's right. If you want to win, <laughs> then there's only one way to win. Play the game That's by right. watching it and marbling at its brilliance. Marveling at the marbling. Marbles. It's marbled. It's it's marbled. It's, it's on a roll. It's, How about that? You ever thought about that? Marbles. It's on, it's a, on a roll. Oh, okay. Marbles is on a Okay. Yeah. That could be like a Then you have a piece of bread next to it. I was gonna say it could be like a food based theme. And it's like a sandwich. Yeah. With bread. But also marbles roll, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Generally, yeah. They Generally. Roll. They usually do that. Do like a Hawaiian roll. Hawaiian roll. Potato bread, potato roll. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so, it. That, these, are, these are all rolls. These are all rolls. These are all rolls. <laughs> They're all rolls. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Coming up. So that's coming up in the next few days. Um, nice. Uh, oh, by the way, we have a new... Uh, a new video up on YouTube, on Modern Road. Where now? On 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 YouTube. Oh, dot com. Interesting. Dot com. Interesting. Yeah. Is this a new site? Yeah. It's, just... it's actually been around for a little while. Oh. For a couple of years now. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, uh, so, what is what is the video? Uh, it's a it's a new Modern Rogue about how uh, uh, how Brian and Jason uh, pitched hacking the system. And oh. So we actually show some of the original pitch footage and some of the documents that they made to pitch the show. Uh, it's a good, it's a good little, it's a good little 20 minute video. I'll tell you what, anybody who wants to be in that field, it's probably a must watch. Uh, Not a lot of people are like fully honest about that kind of stuff. And everybody wants to be an overnight success. Yeah. Or just realistic Ooh. about it. Yeah. yeah. It turns out very few people want to be a very, very slow motion success. <laughs> Which, and then you realize that's all success, yeah, you know? Correct. <laughs> The secret of success, folks, is working on something long after you don't get that immediate gratification. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, kind of like are annoyed with it. <laughs> you just look at it and you're just like, you again? Yeah, and this, says, this one again? And it says, all right, well, all right. what do you want? And you're like, oh, to succeed. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right, you guys want to do some after things? Ready. Yo. Yo. All right, then, Andrew, I'll catch you in for the After Things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Intermain, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, that's me. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy! Justin Robert Young. What's poppin', fam? I'll tell you what's poppin'. What? Bryce, is he pops and locks for us? Oh, ooh, uh, ooh. look at him! Oh, for audio <laughs> listeners, for the first Jeez. time ever! Wow, <laughs> for the first time ever, an entire <laughs> after things of nothing but Bryce Castillo <laughs> popping <laughs> and or <Yeah>. locking. <laughs> to be fair, it actually looked it was a little bit more of a vogue in there. <laughs> look, I'm sitting down. Okay. Uh, I got so nothing. Bryce uh, before yeah. the show. You're, yeah, you're telling us about something. I said, shut up, save it for the show. <laughs> so I talked on the After Things program a few weeks back. I, Andrew, I don't know if you were here for this or not, but um, I talked about the new idea I've got, uh, the new game thing I'm sort of working on, the uh, the betting uh, game, the F1 prediction game. Oh, yeah, where I pointed out that uh, uh, Meyer Lansky had a house named like Castillo, and I made the illusions that perhaps you're connected to the underworld. Hmm. I don't remember that, but that sounds about that sounds about valid for the. That, that sounds that, like that, something that does you'd sound say on book for yep. for Andrew Main, yeah. yeah. So yeah. your uh, yeah. work work continues on the F one gambling game. Yeah. So I uh, I think last time we talked, it was just like an idea, or it was very mm, loose. It wasn't there wasn't much. So over the weekend, uh, I I boot, I made up a a a. a uh, a, sl a sub stack for it and we got posts and got graphics and things and uh, updating some of the st some of the structure of it and all and um, uh, I'm 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 excited for it now that I've got like a sub stack element to it um, and I've like done a little bit of graphic design making like some logos and some key art and things I feel I don't know I feel extra energized for it um, 
now that I'm making some steps towards it, give, the thing. give me the two sentence description of what this is. Yeah. Yeah. And we're looking at this very carefully. So yeah. only two sentences. So right. like 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 be precise. So it is a uh, free knockout prediction game uh, on the F1 season. So you have to answer three questions. And uh, if you get question one right, then you can uh, go to question two. Get that right. You can go to question three. And those tie up with the different sessions of F1 over the weekend. So we like we already had a result on the first question while the practice is going on. And then we'll find out about question two on Saturday after qualifying. And then question three on Sunday after the race. So wait, so we filled out ones during great night. No, no, no. Right? Yes, uh, the, you the, did. W- uh, this w- is it. W- was that about the actual F1 or about marbles? F1. This is all F1. F1. This is not marbles. I totally thought it was marbles the entire time. Which, by the way, makes me think that what you should do is a marbles world tour. Like, figure out some reason to say this marbles is happening in Saudi Arabia or whatever. So we filled okay. out a thing on Tuesday. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and you said it's already, one of them's already gone. And so the way that this works is that you have to, you have to get all three to win, right? Yeah. So like, the, have I won? Uh, well, I guess I'd have to look. Um, and and I actually don't think I entered your enter- answers in yet. But oh, no. well, can I just say I won? What, what happened? <laughs> sure. So uh, the first question was about practice, which is okay. on, on Friday. All right. What? Which one was correct? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great Patreon? Is like if you are a patron that you just get to say you yeah. won. Yeah. All right. Which one was correct? <laughs> so on question one. The question was: Will a Red Bull car finish P one, position one, in any free practice yep. session? Uh, earlier today in first practice, uh, uh, a Red Bull was first position. Okay, so, so I, said, yes. I said yes. And so yes is correct. And that's what I wrote. Uh, yes. And so you were right. Justin, awesome. Justin Robert Young was correct. <laughs> Hooray. And now. You're still in. Yeah, you're still in. So when question two comes around for qualifying I'll tomorrow, answer that tomorrow. Yeah, we'll we'll find out how your answer does. So the idea. After it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll answer the third one yeah. uh, appropriately I, I, after, after all, that. I watched him fill out his <laughs> submission, and he put it in an envelope, and yep. it's been <laughs> on stage the it's entire time. Fun. Whole view. <laughs> I, uh, the the act of making the Substack, um, not just because I was like making graphics and having fun playing with Dolly, which I'll get to in a second, um, but uh, making the Substack and setting it up uh felt like a very like zero to one moment right the idea of of this being like hey you know you set your ballot before the weekend and as the weekend progresses we send out updates on how the sessions went and who you know wins and who gets eliminated over the weekend and just by like even making the substack where you know there's like half of a post up already and then not much else to it just the fact of getting it in getting it there and getting it set up uh, felt like a big wall coming down. Uh, so uh, uh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. What what substantively has changed since you went from zero to one? Because uh, mm-hmm. we 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 know that the most important thing is to go from nothing to something and then iterate from there. Uh, how has the iteration gone? Um, well, I guess the iteration will come this afternoon. Uh, ah. Once once I make the first post about that question. Um, I guess, I guess the thing that feels different is that now there's an avenue for this information to come out. I think in the weeks previous to this, and like the last time we talked about it on this show, I was running everything through the marbles Substack, And so it was always like, here's the marbles thing that you signed up to read. And then also later on, here's this other, you know, it was like trying to never good, never good. There was a friend of mine who got into writing a political substack, but he also was writing soccer recaps because he had done that in the past. Oh, wow. And he was like, well, it's very easy. You can just go into the thing and say, don't send me the soccer ones. And I was like, you need to stop doing that. You need to like, like, like start a new thing, plug it, have one last hurrah that says, hey, if you want to read my soccer thing, then go click on this button. But like differentiate. I'm going to touch upon something too, which we talked about in the last episode of Weird Things. And and I'm, I'm going to make it all about chat GPT. Hey. <laughs> uh, and, and just in the topic of friction, because back in November, in the ancient days, uh, <laughs> before GPT-4, 
uh, before ChatGPT, those times. Remember, remember a time when you were limited by the intellect of you and your friends. Yeah. Um, we were talking about the release of ChatGPT, and we said, one, we're like, yeah, we're, it'll probably be a quiet release. But then we decided, um, let's not ask for a sign up. Just let people come use it, and we'll just moderate outputs, make sure it's fine. Um, we'll just pop people right into the UX, we'll do that. We'll give them some pop up warnings about that, and we'll make it completely free. Those three things, right? Here's yeah. a link. You go there. You have this thing in front of you. That's it. You have the link. You're in it. You do, you do not need to do anything else. You just literally got and the UX, the UX, obviously the training of the model and the UX to make it easy. You're not like, here's a blank screen. Use it, which is sort of our playground. Or like, it's got oh, it's a examples. Chat. I can ask a question. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it's a really well designed UI, and I think this was part of the Dali too. Too, there was an element of like making that page look a certain way because people would share that page. But. but you had to sign up with Dolly and we got rid of that. Yeah. We just oh, got yeah. rid of every bit of friction possible. And flash forward, what happened? You know, the most accordingly, apparently the fastest adopted consumer application in history, the fastest, you know, sign up, you know, fast yeah. adoption of any app, anything, wow. whatever people use it's like this because we got rid of all of the speed bumps you could the well, only thing else we could have done more would have been like download it onto your phone like a u2 album and that would have been bad and yes. so mm -hmm. it was and i'd say like if you people had people like ah it's not that much of it and i i bought we've always known this but like people like ah all they have to do no all all they you just you just created this tiny you know little hole that only some people are going to go through and fewer and the people that are going to likely talk about you and be excited about you they're not there you're already getting rid of a certain class so no friction. Get rid of all the friction you can. Uh, which is it, which is a big update from on this project was simplifying the game. You know, last time we talked, it was like mm -hmm. here are three bets, and you have a wager, and then you pick which ones you want to bet, and then you're wagering, and then you have to find out what your balance is, and then that's friggin' expensive for me to build, and all the, all of these things. So now it's just here are three questions, answer all of them. That's it. Um, even to the point of like not having. Uh, a login or a sign in you just post you just type in your name um and we'll figure it out um so i think that's 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 also one like yeah i, I think there's a, a parallel there with with what you're talking about andrew in terms of trying to remove barriers like make it easy mm -hmm. i go to the thing i answer three questions and then i find out how everyone does um and and yeah. does a Substack reach out uh, uh proactively to say congrats you advanced or you didn't um no no it doesn't because because I, I don't think it does i'm i'm it, it it doesn't send an email or anything well substack's just the email list but it's not the game if that makes sense where sure. does the game live um well, the, the game is just on a form on on Airtable, so it's a database and then the emails will be me writing out <laughs> like hey these people so when i win yeah. How do I know? Because I'm gonna win. I'm already one third of the way to the winner's even, circle. Even less friction. How do we make sure Justin knows? He's I really winning? just, just yeah. can you just what, come to my house and just tell me I won? That says you're winning, you win. Justin. Yes. you're doing now it. Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah, this is a product I can get behind. And show up with a big check, like a big yeah. Check. <laughs> And 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 right now that's one of the I I guess like I'm getting caught up on this because there's a distinction right like everyone will get an email that says how everyone does but I, right now I don't have the means to uh, say Brian you did this um, and yeah. partly that's because people don't they're not going to do anything on the second and third days they're they're just supposed to read because they answer ahead of time anyway yeah. Uh, yeah you know I mean I think that. In general, the biggest thing that you have to play with with a thing like this is the idea that you are adding enhanced uh, rooting interest to the sporting event. That's what makes Eliminator Pools fun. That's what, I mean, right now we're in March Madness, right? Which is a, uh, uh, even as interest in college basketball has declined, March Madness is as big, if not bigger than ever, because as a media spectacle, it has become almost more important. And as a gambling spectacle, as gambling has become legal across America more and more, it has become a, a more important thing. Uh, uh, because it even if you don't care about Creighton versus Gonzaga, 
uh, as Brian found out last year, if you put fifty dollars on so, one of the teams, you care very you much. care a lot more yeah. than you than you would have cared otherwise. Exactly. Uh, uh, so for for that, Bryce, I would say that that any decision that you make in form and function to this, always ask the question: Does this heighten up tension for watching these events happen? Mm. Uh, does it make it more tense, more exciting? And and also think about the life cycle of watching it and it winning or losing, right? right? Like if I am watching a thing and I win, I want a thing to tell me that I won immediately. Like, mm-hmm. like, like you know, when, when we're in Vegas, like if, if I bet a random game just to pass the time and I win, I want to run to that pay window immediately and, and, and get my, get my cash because that's, that's a fun experience. That is that is a coronation. Mm, that's no. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of thought about it from that perspective. Well, and uh, uh, so so right now you email out the accurate standings to everybody who's participating, right? Uh, I will. Yes. Okay. I think so, like, at, at the end is it, right now the model is at the end of the whole thing you say at, who won. At the end of the day, you get the results for that day. Okay. I I, I would say that uh, uh, there are two paths. Uh, the, the path that we've expressed so far is I would love an email that says, you're winning or you, you missed the mark. Look where your standings are. But, but something that, that entices me to, number one, open the email, number two, click on the thing to find out where I am in the rankings or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you want to not write two different you know, versions of the email that go out automatically, then, then at least say uh uh how uh, uh the the race has ended find out how you did and then sure. get them to click to uh check out their standings or whatever absolutely uh, absolutely yeah. um but 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 don't don't give that out for free <laughs> like make them uh, for the cost of one click like 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 right and then that way you get to find out who has a better response rate and all of that stuff yeah. i mean it is um not dissimilar to other projects i've brought about on this show before where um, I'm not trying to get any money out of people. I just want them to play with this thing and enjoy it. And so it's it becomes an a, it's it's a similar challenge I've had on other projects, but it's a fun one of like how do I just make this thing good enough where people will just use it on their own, and I don't need to worry about the bottom of the funnel of trying to get them to put a credit card in somewhere, you know. So that's that's a little bit of where I'm still at, and that's that makes it fun. Um, one of the other parts about this was um, I used a little bit of Dolly to help me make some of these graphics and things. Um, uh, for example. Oh, cool. We see. Yeah, I, I, I could tell because you left the watermark on. Oh, no. No, you didn't. You cropped out the watermark. Well, now, oh. no, now hold on. Oh, day now. Now, hold on. Oh, day now. Now, hold on. Okay, so this, bi- this big image here. Sam, we got one right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. Get him. Okay. Trank so, dart right in Bryce's neck. So I will say. Our, we ask that you disclose somewhere. Does not have to be on the image. Just somewhere. Okay, I'll that, do that. That you um, yeah, generated. And so like. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm gonna follow up with you, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, this one this one wasn't cropped. And I just assumed Substack would crop it. But it didn't if you go to the full thing. Um, so that this is just like a, a, a raw output from Dolly of. Uh, a, a racetrack with rubber on the on the thing, and you can see a car. Um, but then the main, uh, the kind of big hero shot was also a dolly thing, but also with editing. You know, um, uh, the, these barriers were there was no orange on these barriers at all, so I kind of faux colored them in a little bit. You know, uh, contrast, mess with the colors just a bit. Uh, what what about the shallow depth of field that we're seeing? Was that something that that, that was part of it? Yeah, I think because I oh because I you, told you, it give you me a hundred a, a specific lens. Yeah, yeah, I said give me hundred and eighty millimeters, which is super tight. Yeah, very high depth of field. Um, uh, and, which which by the way is a it, it, that's a good pro tip for Dolly is is if you know enough about lenses and a focal length. specific models of cameras and all that stuff, you can get astonishingly good precise images. Yeah. And it was it was fun to play around with that and like brainstorm ideas for that. You know, um, I wish I had thought about that. I would have brought some of the, some of the generations in here. But uh, di- different things of like textures, of locations, of times of day, and various different assets 
that I can pull and use and edit for, do, for this thing. Do you vaguely know, so Portress. the image we're looking at right now uh, appears to be at nighttime, uh, illuminated by, uh, you know, sodium arc lights and, uh -huh. uh, uh, like, do you remember what the prompt was that you gave for this? Uh, e more or less, it was um, a 14 millimeter uh, uh, shot of, of a photo of, um, of a formula of a racetrack, of what it, a, a tight corner or of a hairpin of a racetrack, and a car is just starting to be visible, which is why you kind of see it just on the edge here and only part of it. Um, and there's red and white curb strips. There's a rubber line starting to be formed on the on the track. Um, small amounts of debris and things. Did, did you specifically ask for the car just to be entering the frame? I did. Okay. Uh, and in, which, in which most of them, it was it was not very good about that. In this one, this was like the only one where it kind of got that. Look yeah, that right. uh, in, yeah, in, in the advertising biz, they call it here. A frame line magnetism. The idea that it implies a bigger picture around it. That's that's good. We are. This has been disclosed. We are testing an improved version of Dolly right now. Limited. You'll see stuff floating around Ooh. to that. Nice. Ooh, mm. that's exciting. Because using using Dolly over uh, since it's been out has been a lot of fun and a really interesting creative tool. Yeah. To at least get started, to brainstorm, to get drafted. You know, um, like this logo. Like I, yeah. I mean, I did start with a Dolly thing, but I also edited it quite a bit. I had a I. That the text and this logo were all me. It's not. Um, that's not a Dolly thing. So it it is empowering. It feels empowering as someone who does have some graphics chops. It felt empowering to just say, "I need this kind of thing." Make it appear. Yeah, that was very cool. I mean, it's it's cool. amazing for that. Amazing, and I think that's part of what what makes me so excited about the idea of people look at this as a tool and not a magic genie is that. The expectation then goes to, oh, what can I do with this very powerful, very exciting tool unless I asked the magic genie for a thing and it only gave me a different thing than I wanted. And it's like, all right, well, that's not helpful. You gotta work it a little bit. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's it, a tool. It's, it's like, tool. like, like, you know, you can write a novel on Microsoft Word. Like, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that, that that's a, the, exactly the, the thing that just spits out. You can't lure them, ipsum it. Well, and, and it's it's a, a little bit like uh, being a producer or a director that sends a, a, a B unit out, like, like uh, give me footage of the desert, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, make it look kind of like this. And then, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, like, good enough, great. Yeah. Footage of the desert. And it's it's really cool. Bada bing, sunset. <laughs> yeah, you know, your own little, like, assistant, basically. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it does always push it, it pushes us more into the roles of editor and 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 advances the creative process a little bit in that uh, uh, when you actually are creating stuff for a living, what you realize is so much is in the 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 refining. I mean, that is really the the longest part of the process, the most important part of the process. Uh, uh, you know, with, with world's greatest con, we have we have, uh, uh, and this is a production philosophy for me on everything is that the the first draft is garbage it's a bad it's a bad product uh, get it out there so you can start working on the form and function of it and and without you know like i i call it a garbage draft because i have a self-loathing complex but like uh, uh in general a first draft a sloppy first draft is something that's incredibly powerful well in 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 the spirit of uh after things i i do think there's value in the words garbage garbage script because it gives you permission to start like if, if yes. all parties agree yeah. that this is the garbage script it, it exists only to be murdered so that we can strip away and find the bones then then nobody's going to hesitate to start and then yes. you go from zero to one yeah. and then you're able to refine from there yeah and i i had a uh, almost bit of um mm, what's it called of, of like dissonance while making some of these like assets and things because you know uh this is only what the second or third uh, of these like prediction things that i've done and i only just changed the whole way that it's set up so uh, it, it is a certain amount of like a trial by fire but on the same token it's still after one we're post one now you know the graphics can get better the the way it's set up can change if it needs to you know but making that step so that you have the next 
action in front of you. You now can send an email. You now can have a box where you post an image. Yeah. Um, just that little bit is so powerful. It's still po- still really powerful. Yep. So uh, that's that. If you where yeah, where can people sign up? Where can people play? Uh, They're all going to be either as good as me or worse. So that's like, right. Just so you know, it's kind of binary, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's why they call it ranks. Way. They'll either be ranked above you or beneath you. No, but not above me because I'm going to be good (laughs) and I'm going to answer all the questions after they've happened. Well, and we know your rank, so. We do. Uh, Number one. (laughs) And stinky. Uh, The the website is Um, blindcorners.substack.com. The the links are there to enter. We're going to make it easy for you to get the prediction ballots and to find out uh, how things are going over the weekends but uh check it out please join it's fun it's free it's easy thank you fun hey uh i got a pick pick it up <laughs> pick it up pick it up it's a little bit of a scrappy underdog tale yep little thing called ted lasso season 3 mm, oh. it is a scrappy underdog tale yeah well i mean yeah. uh almost to a fault <laughs> But I love it uh I, I, I thought uh, first episode of season 3 was quite good um uh, I enjoy it as being it's it's uh, that whole series is so so paint by numbers and I think <laughs> I love it because it's paint by numbers like it's exact like like our, our heroes are so at the lowest status possible that they literally go into the sewer <laughs> and yeah. they're up against somebody who's clearly evil because he has his hair turned gray over the last two seasons and now he's backlit i'm describing joe biden i just realized by a a red background uh it's great it's great it's a good show nice i for i forgot that it's back uh last season Uh, final season i believe believe so they haven't confirmed people are rumors but no one has actually confirmed that it's like a heavy rumor and i because i tried looking it up a few weeks ago Somebody uh, said that there was like a thing on the show itself or, or some of the... Well, well, oh, well hey. at, at the end of season one, uh, quite literally, there's a, a well, three-minute three chunk where he says, well, we're going to we do, do X, this, Y, and Z. We're going to do this, yeah, and then yeah, we're yeah. going to win the whole thing. Yeah. And, but, but, but then maybe they could subvert that by holding back the announcement of season four and uh, disappoint us in season three so, by yeah. not sticking so to this the is, script. So this is Deadline. Jason Sudeikis says Ted Lasso is the end of the story we wanted to tell, and... Uh, uh, says what I I would assume would be the next thing, which is spinoffs of characters that are beloved because uh, they will not stop making Ted Lasso because Apple ran out of money. I will tell you that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, They will keep making Ted Lasso related content uh, for as long as somebody wants to sell Apple Ted Lasso related content. If they're willing to stay in character the entire time, uh, boy, what I would pay to watch Coach Beard, Jamie Tart, and uh, uh, Keeley in a reality show for for a full season. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Man, season two killed it for me. I just had zero interest after that. Oh wow. I was like I have no. I have not gotten through season two. So I I will have to I'll have to gut it out through two to uh to, to pick it up on three. Uh season two lands with a really good uh uh, uh good guy going bad. It's yeah. I enjoy Yeah, it. that part I'm like, okay, but then like, oh, and what's gonna happen to this relationship? Like, oh my god, I have to go through this again. <laughs> like I have to go through this. like like I Oh, that's done. That's done. Let's move on. I'll, so, uh, uh, I'll float out there. Uh, ep- j- just give a try to episode one of season three. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was like a breath of fresh air. Mm. There we go. Get some breath. All in right, there. Tim. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I got a I got a pick for you. Hey, what's your pick, Bryce? Uh, it's the it's the Open AI uh, project Dolly, which is very very helpful to me over the past weekend. <laughs> uh, check it out. Uh, it is a lot of fun. They give you some free credits every month. I've bought I think I've bought some as well. Um, but it's it's such a cool thing. It takes a it. Uh, I think the difference between Dolly and maybe some of the other generators out there that in in my view in my ex- my seeing of other people using those other things is that Dolly maybe takes a little longer to get the exact prompt that you want. But then when you do, those prompts tend to look better than some of the other ones out there. Um, that's my it general is, opinion. Uh, no, I think, I think there's a lot to what you're saying. Like, like uh, I play with all AI systems. Oh. I try to like, I don't want to be in like, yeah. uh, you know, Mr. Company man and be like all oh, this. I think that, uh, 
image generation is such a fast moving space because with image stuff, you're going to see a lot more fast moving there. I think there than like language models because images, it's like there's a finite amount of images out there basically to train on and how you subdivide that. And then it really comes into just, well, we're going to throw a lot of effort experiment on this. Well, another group is like, we're going to experiment a lot on trying this. Mm -hmm. And you see different capabilities and stuff come up. So it's, uh, man, it's fast moving. You know, you look at like where we were, Dolly launched a year ago. Wow. Yeah. And it's like night and day compared to then. Yeah. And everything else, mid journey, all of that. You just look at where these things, how, how much they've got you yeah, mid journey five, like is doing like, so it looks like it's got some amazing quality images and whatnot. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you pay a lot of attention. You start to understand what the strengths of the different systems are, but it is just fat. It is amazing to see how fast this is all moving. Yeah. Uh, so check it out. Play, play with the future yourself at, uh, with Dolly. Any other picks? Uh, yeah. uh yeah, go ahead, Andrew. No, go ahead, Justin. I don't have one right now. Oh, I don't either. <laughs> I was hoping f that you'd cover for me. It's okay if you Yeah, don't. I do. I, I still love my Arju Boy. Like, I've got... I got the play date, which I, my eyes, I can't read it, which I'm sure the games are amazing. They did really good work. But, like, that reflective screen from, like, it's just not meant for me. Where my little Arju Boy, which... You know, it's got a lot of little fun games on there. Uh, like oh. that's actually audio pretty... listener is it's a, uh, 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 oh, like an Ardu Arduino. Arduino. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Ar oh, okay. Yeah. It uses an Arduino Leonardo. So it's got like, uh, different games on here. Like let's do catacombs of the damned. It's going to load up there. Oh, okay. It's a, it looks like a kind of tiny, how does it, how does it being so tiny feel to you? It looks kind of tiny. Um, I mean, I'll sometimes, I might, it's probably the only time I use reading glasses. So here, here watch this little <laughs> RPG game. Oh, wow. Oh, it's like, it's a dungeon crawler. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah, there's a good, they've got a lot of, it comes with 200 games on it. Um, wow. It's just, it fits in your wallet. And it's like, there's like a lot of, I've spent more time on this than just about anything other than maybe like my Switch. Like I bought some other stuff that's just like, this is just it's so damn cool. Again, you can put it in your pocket, pull it out. There's like all kinds of different games on there, like puzzle games, stuff like this. I just have fun with it. I love, I love that it's 2023 and I work at the most advanced AI in the world. And like my favorite yeah. thing is <laughs> you're playing the Game Boy. <laughs> I wonder if we're gonna so. see more of these, right? Like small, cheaper consumer devices like this. We see between the play will, date and this. I will tell you this. Um you can it's very easy to program for them with gpt4 like Ooh. you can you can get you can give it a, you can get it i could i was i said oh let me create just a simple put a thing on a screen that says this there is my code transfer it to, how, how do i put this on here oh get arduino do this da, 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 run it there it was on the screen what? wow what a gift that would be uh how, how, how much are one of these mm. Uh, are you boys they're pre-ordering for 55 dollars. right so for 55 right. bucks uh imagine that you just put a little bit of a layer of ai on there and it's like uh okay tell me about this person that you know that you're giving it to do they like blank or blank blank or blank blank or blank and then it just sort of figures out yeah i, I think it's only like 20 questions and you pretty much have a fingerprint of what they're into and then you know write a custom script that's essentially about them and then that's the gift to them is they play one game oh, on this thing. Yeah. No, I was describing that to my wife. I said that like, we think about like, how does AI change things? We think about things like birthday cards, like, Oh, birthday games, like make yeah. a game for somebody based on all their friends. And like, and that's like, I'll pay, I'll pay 50 bucks. And Brian, here's a game. We can all play for an hour on your birthday and I'll have fun. And that that's going to be a reality. I made a JavaScript game for some people I'm on a team with because they've got some funny inside jokes. And I just said, eh, I just was in between calls. I'm just a GPT-4, like, do this, add a splash screen that does this, do this, do this, do this, boop. And then I had an up and running game. And then I shared it, you know. Well, like, and and, all the and, and we're in. probably not very far off. Uh, uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I would imagine that you could do things like, uh, hey, here are the emails between me and Justin for the last 14 years. Uh, have you I, did you have you seen the Microsoft announcement yesterday? Yeah. Oh, no, wait, is it literally about um, the liter Microsoft it's thing? Literally, what like like the, they were pitching mm -hmm. using OpenAI and using ChatGPT or using GPT four uh, that you will be able to tell 
like, you know, what what you can find, like what are all of my relationships? When's the last time I talked to them? You can train it on your files. You yeah. train it on your office files. Mm -hmm. So you can wow. say, so, take this document, little, make a PowerPoint out of it. Thing we forgot, I forgot to mention in the uh, the earlier broadcast we can mention here too is one of the, the things I was excited about. It's called about, weird and things, went, and you don't need to be ashamed of it. Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, maybe not of the show itself, Brian, <laughs> yeah. but other aspects. Yeah. I, I, we internally we have an amazing group of researchers, and we have testers, and we have people like this, and then company wide, company wide, we throw it open to say play with stuff, and like I just jump in on that and one of the things i played with a lot because i'm like oh this is actually really useful in certain things was one of the gpt4 like G these language models have token limits like the word limits of how many tokens they can use like right now the one in the gpt4 and chat gpt if you want to use that is like four thousand tokens as a limit um that'll go up we have ones you can play uh, like in our playground environment that go up to thirty-two thousand tokens which is like nice. twenty-five thousand words Wow. So you can put 25,000 words of text in there, like documentation stuff, whatever, and ask a question. Good wow. Lord. Exciting. Yeah. Any other picks? Uh, yeah. My pick is chat gpt4 <laughs> is the last I of us oh my god it. Oh, stop it yeah okay stop it <laughs> don't make me I haven't seen it yet I, I know I, I haven't seen I, the I finale of the last of us because Look, really it is looking forward because it is it is not anything that anyone wants to hear when you complain about a thing that's popular uh, so that so i haven't seen it chat gpt4 has seen everything <laughs> uh, and late. that's what i that's it's what i love all. about it i love chat gpt4 and i'm looking forward to playing around more with it in fact i've like been doing stuff all week and i'm like i just need to lock down some dedicated Chat GPT four time, and I am I am thrilled to do that today and this weekend. Uh, well, and, and specifically, uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, uh, this is me, Brian Brushwood speaking, unaffiliated with anyone. Um, best decision I made all day was deciding to pay twenty bucks for the Fast Pro. Like, yeah. just don't don't make me wait. <laughs> just let's go. I I pay for it, and I pay for my wife to have it, even though I can like <laughs> internally be like, hey, but I I just I just was like. I, I just want to have I, my personal account. I want to know that I always have it. That there was definitely a moment that I thought, oh, do I want to bug Andrew? I'm like, no, I just want to spend 20 bucks and have fast just access. Do it. <laughs> just, just do it. Just do it. I, I, yeah, I appreciate, we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you. Beep, bop, boop. <laughs> your unique distinction will become part of our own. <laughs> Thank you for your modesty. <laughs> You are in the good list. <laughs> <laughs> we just, uh, we just, I got to do a thing last night, which was we, uh, uh, I, I've been handling the Twitter account the, all week, this week, which one, I got to press the button to tweet out GPT-4 is oh, here. Oh, that, like, that awesome. was awesome. Like, oh my God. That's like that pressing like, the launch button at NASA. Come on. <laughs> that's amazing. It, it was pretty cool. Cause it was like, oh, I get to beat the world. Well, though, once I press this button, the thing that I've already been talking about, but I get to press the button that makes it official. And then like, was like, beep, boop, boom, and three, boom. two, and then, one, make ship go now. <laughs> last night, last night, we, uh, we finally allowed subscriptions for chat GPT plus in India. And so we got to tweet that out. I let my wife press the tweet button. Oh, so hey, that's wonderful. That's yeah. Uh. So a few people in India. There's a few people there. Yeah. Some of them like computers. World's largest democracy. Yeah, was largest, most populous country now too. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. So, yeah. There you go, All right, gentlemen. It's been after. Hey. Nice. Good stuff, everybody. Nice, nice. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Weird Things. You can go. Yeah. Uh, we will be back a little later tonight. We got marbles coming up in a few hours. Uh, we're gonna go record some videos and some other things. Please enjoy it. Uh, got the podcast coming back next week as well. Founders Day coming up. Make sure you get on the thing. Yeah. Or don't. Yeah. What World's Greatest Con Season 3 coming out uh, as soon as my oh, living don't hell do, of don't do when, that. Oh. When, when and where ads will show up. Be very cool. Your mic's muted. Oh, am I? No, uh, Brian's. Also. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, that's going to do it, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.